happened. I don't know what it is. Some people would say it's courage. Some people say stupidity. I don't know. But what I did was I let go of trying to be funny, trying to do something to be clever, trying to stand out. In other words, I got out of my goddamn head and I just felt what I needed to do on that stage on that day. I then got sentenced to um, adult facility for the severity of my crimes. And I'm talking about like real jail, not juvenile detention, cell blocks, jail. And I spent, I got sentenced for almost a year and a half and I was there for about three months and I was trying to do my best, I was doing my homework, I was doing everything and then one day over breakfast, somebody reached for the coffee, said, who took the rest of the fucking coffee? And I said, and I knew I had to admit it because people were going to call me up and I said, I did. Man with a wife and two kids. The average age of men fathering a minor is 25. At age 16, I still let him take a dive. He never wore a lid, I would soon rid his third. High school dropout, that's absurd. I don't want to be like my mommy and be a teenage mommy. So I decided to move away and leave my puppy love stray. The next time we play, he will be intoxicated. He hated me in his every tequila breath. When he had nothing left to say, he would lay his hands on me. Not the first time I've been hit, see. A man has done this to me before. I don't speak to my first love or my father anymore. And then I went on and I got married. And it blew up. And I got married and might have been a little impulsive with it. Got married six months after I met him. And I discovered when I was pregnant with our first child that he actually didn't like to work at all. <laughs> in the world, alongside being one of the most prolific speakers around and multiple New York Times bestselling author, Gary Vayner Chuck. <laughs> As a critical personal brand, we all probably know him because of the ask. Gary V. Show. Everybody, get on your feet! And what bag following the momentum over the last couple weeks, and now with such a warm welcome, I, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice if I kind of spent, you know, the 73% of this talk on stuff that you've seen on YouTube or have seen me before do. So I'm of the mindset of possibly going into a complete hour of QA. Uh, but I can also give a talk back. Why don't we do this way? How many people would like to start lining up and go into QA, see where that takes us, and then I'll do a talk on the back end if, uh, if that's not the right direction? Show of hands. And how many people want to talk? Woo! <laughs> Why don't we do this? Why don't, why, don't, why don't we do this? Why don't I start ripping a little bit? Why don't you? Why don't the people that want to ask questions actually line up and start getting behind the uh, behind the mics? And maybe I'll create some fucking weird Toronto hybrid of fucking talk and Q and A and take it from there. So, all right. So let me start talking well, about some of the stuff that's interesting to me right now. <laughs> I think that one thing that everybody in this room should be pondering, and one thing that I'm becoming extremely fascinated by, is that we. I'm fascinated by the fact that really I'll be able to do this for the rest of my life and I'll be able to continue to build businesses that are successful and yet it's just basically the same shit over and over which is, <laughs> which is if you go and dissect what I'm about to talk about for an hour now and go watch a 2009 talk, it's basically the same exact strategy. The only difference is, is that I've put in the time and the effort to understand the contextual differences of the places that we're actually paying attention to. So if, that was 2000, if this talk was about how I built my library in the beginning, back in 2001, I would still be talking about the one thing that I think connects all of us, which is I don't care what you do here or what your ambition is to solve the world's problems, to start a business, to whatever it may be, a B2B business, a B2C business, a product, a service, the number one thing we all battle for and the number one North Star that everybody in this room should understand is it's all about attention. Attention is the asset. 
Once you have the attention, then what you say, what you do, what you put out, the creative, is the variable of you being massively successful or nobody giving a fuck, right? And so the thing that I've been doing is very simply not being romantic about where the attention is. I would have loved for it to have stayed on Twitter forever. I moved first, I moved best, I was one of the 20 most followed people on it, and had the world frozen in 2011 and stayed still, and that played out, I would have been in a very nice spot. I didn't want to put in the hours from one to four in the morning, figuring out social cam and Vine, which then gave me the strategies and the abilities to be good at Snapchat and Instagram video. But I always know that it is completely irrelevant everything I've done up to this moment if I want to be successful and if I want to be in a place where I'm blessed with the fact that people want to come and see me talk. So, you know, really it's quite scary to me. Well, I'm thrilled to layer on top of it, but the punchline, and literally I could say this and leave because it's the only thing I believe in, which is you need to understand where the attention is. The better your product or service is, the more successful you're gonna be, because I promise you one thing. There's no marketing strategy or tactic that I'm gonna be able to tell you that if your product is shit, it's not going to work. (laughs) So it's better if your thing is good, your wine store, your book, your sneaker, your SaaS product, it's better if your thing is good. However, the punchline of everything I believe in and the things that have given me opportunities to be successful is where is the attention right now that is underpriced? And that's a very important variable. and outdoor and billboards and Google AdWords and all this stuff, they still work. They just don't work as well for the time and financial allocation as the moment when they were in their prime. Facebook works ridiculously well right now if you're an actual practitioner of it. And in 36 months, it won't work as well because it will be more expensive to achieve the same exact result as you do today. I'm not spending time on Musical.ly right now For any other reason then, if it actually pops and goes mainstream and ages above eight to 12 year olds and becomes a platform, because don't forget, just five minutes ago, Facebook was only for college kids. If it does that, I want to have the land grab, the 100,000 followers I already have on a platform that's only eight to 12 year old girls, you know, will turn into nothing for me, other than maybe go to fucking jail. is is gonna turn into nothing for me unless it ages up, but when it does, I'm there and I win. My game is quite simple. I wanna buy up beachfront property and build the best buildings and restaurants and homes, and as long as I'm right one out of three times, the ROI was positive for all the work. It blows my mind how many of you in marketing and business drew a line in the sand and 